I've been covering the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter electric vehicles for more than a decade. And there are very few companies in existence today that were around before I started covering the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles. And I'm back in San Diego to see the progress that Aptera has made since I was last here just about a year ago. I'm back with Chris Anthony, one of the founders of Aptera. Chris, it's been a crazy busy year for you guys. It has been an amazingly busy year for us. Uh, we've made amazing progress with the vehicle design. We've taken in a lot of great uh, fans and customers and investors, and now we're just prepping for production. So the last time I was here, we had a masked ride around mm -hmm. in Noir, yep. which was your first the very alpha first. prototype. And I think I was the first journalist to you get were. a ride around. It was rough. It <laughs> was fun. I really enjoyed it. In fact, I think I, I commented that you managed to get me to, uh, to go, woo! Holy moly! <laughs> oh my goodness! Go. <laughs> As we accelerated around the lot. We are in a different place now. Yep. So the facility we were in last time was further south from here. Yep. And this is what the the beta production facility we've got like six facilities now we've got one down south we've got uh, ui operation up north we've got this facility which is just completing our betas we've got our big production facility which is eighty thousand square feet but they've spent months just working on the floor uh, we've got another smaller shop seventeen thousand square feet just south of that and we're trying to sign a lease on a solar facility right now exciting yeah. now i'm going to ask the tough question this was an alpha prototype and behind it, we have a beta prototype. Now, if I didn't know anything about cars, I would go that this was more advanced than that. So for the benefit of people watching, scratching their heads going, that just looks like a, a, an engineering project and this looks like something I might want to buy. Can you explain to me why this looks amazing and that looks a little Heath Robinson? <laughs> Well, the first vehicles we built, the Alpha Generation, were really to show the world what Aptera was about. Show them solar, a, a future with solar mobility in it, and show them the, the comfort and the drivability and the storage, and it really had to be a complete vehicle to show people what it was going to be. Now that we've passed the point of needing to show the world what we're going to be, now that we have you know so many thousand uh, orders and so many thousands of investors, now we're trying to get the vehicle into production. So now we needed to make um, you know a vehicle that has more production content in it in terms of suspension, steering, electronics, battery pack, all those things. And that's what the beta is. It's rough, it doesn't look as nice, but it really is testing out all those production components so we can get to the end of this year and actually deliver our first production right. vehicle. Because making this car as it stands now with the parts that you had when you made it mm -hmm. which have a been prohibitively expensive some of them yes <laughs> and b would have taken hours and hours and hours of of production because this was entirely handmade yeah, you know, another thing that happened was uh, Steve and I and the team had designed this vehicle and built these first Alpha vehicles. And we sat back and we thought, you know, we've solved the math equation for efficiency and we put it out to the world. Uh, we hope that the world likes it, but we didn't know <laughs> the world would like it. We kind of crossed our fingers and said, it would be great if we got a thousand pre-orders. Gosh, we can make a company out of that. And I knew from my boat building experience that you really need like three or 4,000 to really make a company out of it and get some economies of scale. We had that in like the first couple weeks of opening pre-orders. So then it was like, okay, now, you know, it's not just this kind of small niche EV company. Like this can really move the needle. We can build tens of thousands of these. So how do we make a plan to build tens of thousands of these things? And, you know, with Sandy Monroe's help, Monroe and Associates, and working with Roush and some of our other great uh, collaborative partners, we've been able to take this alpha design, turn it into the beta design, which was really designed nine months ago. We're just now seeing the results of that. And now we're onto the gamma design and we're looking to put a pin in the gamma design in the next few months and then we'll begin building our gamma vehicles which will then turn into delta which is pre-production vehicles so that's kind of the evolution of the vehicles and i'm just so excited to you know deliver our first one now you were talking about some of the changes between this vehicle and this vehicle to me off camera earlier it doesn't look any different but there are some very subtle and important tweaks mm -hmm. that your engineering team have made to make it handle better, 
to make it more aerodynamic. Can you give me kind of the 40,000 foot view of those? Uh, the big changes between this beautiful vehicle here and this rougher looking vehicle here is that we increase the volume of the main body by 1%. So you have more headroom. Uh, we've redesigned the seats so your H-point is lower, so your butt sits closer to the floor. We've actually moved the driver and passenger inboard more because you're kind of, you're sitting in kind of an egg shape. So the more inboard you are, the more room it feels like you have. Uh, ingress and egress is, uh, is better because we changed the, uh, the door aperture design a bit. And then we got into the really, you know, fundamental aspect of the vehicle, the drivability, the stability, uh, braking, acceleration, all those things. And we completely redesigned the suspension. Um, you know, the rear is now a dual trailing link suspension. Uh, the front is much, much more aerodynamic, uh, and that saved us uh, big time. Even though we increased the volume of the main body 1%, we actually decreased the aerodynamic drag by like 5%. And that's through redesigning the wheel pants and having better suspension and all those sorts of things. So it's that's come together cool. really well. That is very cool to see. Now, this engineering prototype has a radiator at the front. Yes. Which this one doesn't have. And you explained to me earlier the reason behind that. Yeah, uh, th this vehicle has skin cooling, so the belly pan actually acts as the radiator. So as you drive, the, the belly pan is what is getting rid of all the heat from the HVAC and the batteries and the drivetrain and all that. But in this vehicle, we wanted to be able to access, you know, get to everything. So get to the battery pack, get to the drivetrain, get to all the wires for a lot of reasons. So we just put a, uh, a radiator on the front, which uh, the radiator on the front uh, serves a purpose for this vehicle, but if we did that in production, it would double the aerodynamic drag of the whole vehicle to have air flow through a radiator. So, um, you know, it's something that you don't think about because you see other electric vehicles and they have kind of a grill on the front or an opening, you know, where does that go? It goes to a radiator. Uh, and if you can make an electric vehicle that doesn't need a radiator, you get much better aerodynamics. Now you also, people are going to ask, how can this have the same characteristics as that? Because this doesn't have any, uh, any doors on it, doesn't have a rear canopy on it. And again, something that I didn't think about until I was here was I learned that, that you've actually put additional ballast and weight at appropriate points in the vehicle. So it behaves as if it was a finished machine. Yeah, yeah, for the, the vehicle dynamics and suspension tuning and drivetrain tuning that we're doing, we've added ballast to the beta vehicle so we can, you know, feel um, how the weight is balanced in aggressive turning and stopping and acceleration and all those things. So we, we mimic as best we could a production intent vehicle with this vehicle by adding different ballast in different areas. Now, I can also see the Alafe in-wheel motors for the first time really clearly yep. on the beta prototype. <laughs> Is that a generational shift from what we saw in the Alpha prototypes? Yeah, we've worked with the LaFe over the last year to increase the efficiency of those motors, decrease the weight, um, and decrease the complexity so we can actually manufacture the motor uh, when it comes time. So uh, right now it's uh, built in two parts. So you have kind of a knuckle on the inside of the motor and then you have the motor assembly. So we've combined those parts. So we reduce part count, we reduce weight. We do a lot of nice things. So it's been an amazing journey with the guys in Slovenia and we greatly appreciate their help. Now, you have said this year that you hope to get your first deliveries by the year end. Mm -hmm. And earlier this year, some deliveries were pushed back slightly. Tell me what the timeline is right now for kind of a, a hopeful end of the year. What's that going to look like for Aptera? The bulk of our efforts right now is lining up suppliers and vendors to supply our factory up, uh, up in North Carlsbad here. Um, it's, you know, getting uh, the Alafe guys aligned with supplying the wheel motors. It's getting front subframe assemblies welded up by a uh, supplier. It's getting, you know, uh, a contract manufacturer to make most of the door components. So we have to line up all those people, sign those supply agreements, pay the ED&T and and development dollars, pay the tooling dollars and have them lined up for production. It seems like the longest window to make some of those happen is about six months. So we're kind of in that window now where we need to release parts now in the next couple months to actually deliver somebody a complete vehicle by the end of the year. If you're missing one of those components, you can't ship a vehicle without a door. Right. Um, you can't ship a vehicle right. without a motor. So like all of those, uh, you know, 1,070 components have to be there, 
on the day you want to build the vehicle right. and you got to be able to put it together so and things like the doors they're, they're now locked in are they the doors the hood the solar panels they're all pretty much locked yeah in. yeah we have made uh, lots of major subsystems that are locked and ready to go it's now working with vendors um you know all over the world really to supply those components to us uh, the door systems and and uh, are one of the first things to be released because they were designed by Roush. So we, we, we worked with Roush and we said, we have this very unique vehicle. You guys have designed more door systems than anybody. Help us. Um, and they did. And it was amazing. And we love where we got to with them. So let's talk about mirrors. Last time we were here, we talked about the hope that you could maybe minimize aerodynamic drag by using rear view cameras. We've seen some progress on that, but we haven't seen full committal. NHTSA this week, we're filming this second week of March. NHTSA has literally just said, we will allow cars to be built and put onto the road without traditional control surfaces. Do we think that we're gonna see some movement on, on cameras? So it's, it's crazy to think that NHTSA will allow vehicles on the road without steering wheels but you still need a side view mirror. But you still need a side view mirror. <laughs> the legislators um, have continually crushed our ambitions. Um, and we think as of now, we will be shipping vehicles with side view mirrors and an augmented camera system to give you better visibility. We think the visibility from our eyes forward uh, vision system is gonna be far superior to your side view mirrors. And you know, that's just the way of the world. We're gonna have mirrors. So does it look as if in the future, because something that you've been big on as a company is to engage with owners and enthusiasts who want to modify and work on their vehicles do i do i infer from that that at the, a point in the future we could be replacing those larger side view mirrors with something like we see here on on um on the on the, well, the our vision system will be independent of the side view mirrors so should the regulators relent and let us take the side view mirrors off, we would just let our customers know that, hey, you don't need those side view mirrors anymore and they could take them off very quickly. Chris, it's been great to, to talk to you and catch up. I cannot wait to see your gammas and your deltas when they come out. So fingers crossed that will happen in the next uh, six months or so. And we'll be back here maybe before the end of the year. Thanks so much for coming down. It's been a pleasure. And thanks to you at home for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and of course subscribe hit that notification bell and you will stay up to date with the latest awesome content from this channel i'll be back soon with more great content for you all to enjoy but until then i'm nikki gordon bloomfield kakite see you next time